you may have wondered why we are talking about the codomain of a function all the time and not of the range. Why are we doing this? What is the difference exactly between codomain and range? And why do we need this codomain at all? We will learn all of this in this video. We will use two examples. First example, f from r to r, fx equals x squared. We can read off the domain and the codomain straight away. Domain is a set of all admissible inputs. And you can put you can square any real number, so we can take r over here. Codomain is the set in which all output values lie. If I square a number, I will get another number. So the codomain we choose is r. So domain and codomain, you can write down that straight away. For the range, you often have to think a bit more. The range is the set of all values which are actually attained by the function. What's that in this case? Well, if I square a number, say 2 squared, we get 4, 0 squared yields 0, minus 1 squared yields plus 1. If I square numbers, I can get only positive values, and I will get all positive values. So in this case, the range of the function f will be 0 infinity. So a subset, the range, of the codomain is all of r. You can also see this, by the way, by just graphing the function. Well, in this case, it is still, well, I would say quite easy to determine the range of the function. But now we go to an example which is a bit harder. Example 2. We take the function r of t, which goes from r to r2. So input values are all numbers in r, but as an output value we will have a vector. We we'll take this prescription over here, r of t equals cosine t sine t. So cosine and sine don't cause me any trouble, so we can choose as a domain r. We can put any real number into the cosine and the sine. That's okay. Writing down the codomain is also easy, because what comes out will be some vector r and r2. So the codomain of f is r2. But what about the range? Can I reach any vector in R2? Well, probably not, because I have cosines and sines, and those are bounded, so I will certainly not have as a range all of R2. But what will we have? Well, if we put x equals cosine t and y equals sine t, just as a notation, and to graph in over here later on, uh, we know that x squared plus y squared equals 1. So all points over here will lie on the circle where x squared plus y squared equals 1. So let's look at the figure. Here we have the xy plane. The codomain in blue is all of R2. The range consists only of the points satisfying x squared plus y squared equals 1. So the point on the red circle over here. So the range in this case, fortunately we are still able to determine it, but you see we really have to do a lot more work. The range in this case is all points in R2 satisfying x squared plus y squared equals 1. So, let us summarize. The domain of a function is the set of all admissible input values, or you can choose, if you like, you can choose it smaller, so the set of admissible input values. You have a choice here for the domain. Codomain is a set containing all output values, and usually you will choose something like R2, R3, something easy. You can choose something more clever, of course, for the codomain, but it's usually chosen the easy one. Like over here, we just took R2 as our codomain. So that one is usually easy to determine. And the range is a set of all output values which are actually attained by the function. And determining the range, that can be really hard. Here we were able still to do it, but in general, if you have some function from calculus, it will be quite hard to determine the range of a function.